Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Welcome to today's video. I haven't done a sit down video or a book recommendations video in a very, very long time. I feel like I've been doing so many reading vlogs and just vlogs in general that I just haven't sat down and talked to you guys, given you guys recs. I haven't done a recommendations video in a while because I didn't want them to get too repetitive because I like to recommend the same books I've realized, but I have lots of different genres and types of books here today. So a bunch of book recommendations for you guys to read in spring slash summer, these upcoming seasons, you know, when the nice weather coming. These are the books that I feel like you guys would enjoy or would like or maybe you'll get a recommendation from this video. I don't know. I hope so because I have a lot of books to talk about. I'm going to give recommendations and then I'm also at the end going to give you my TBR of books I would like to get to over the spring and the summer. So lots to talk about today, lots to get through today. We're gonna get right into it because I have, as you can see, quite a lot. This is just the recommendations and then I have another pile for my TBR. And if you're wondering why I'm in my kitchen, you're probably like, Sarah, what's wrong with your bedroom? Why can't you film in your bedroom? I can't film in there because my neighbors play basketball, I kid you not, from morning to sundown. And it is so annoying but i can't say anything because I'm, I'm happy for them to get some some exercise in you know they're having fun they're going outside but it's right outside my window i just hear dribbling literally in my dreams now so we're in the kitchen today and it's fine my dogs are right here they're sleeping they're gonna hang with us let's get into the spring and summer book recs starting off pretty strong i have a fantasy duet and i know that fantasy is not the ideal genre for summer and spring it's more of a winter fall aesthetic of a genre but i finally have read a good amount of fantasies that i now have an excuse to recommend these to you guys so that's what i'm doing right now i'm gonna recommend you guys some fantasies that if you want to try out some fantasies these are the ones i I'm gonna recommend The Serpent and the Wings of the Night duet by Carissa Broadbent. She is my newfound favorite fantasy author. She is amazing, but this is a duet. There's a novella between that I read on my Kindle, but you don't have to read it. It kind of just introduces a couple characters that you see in the second book. I am almost halfway in the second one, so I didn't finish it, but I am recommending it anyway. This is about Oriah, who was found when she was younger by a vampire king. He's the king of the House of Night. He took her in. He kind of raised her as his daughter, taught her how to fight and everything, and now she is going into this tournament, Think Hunger Games, is called Kajari where there's like five different trials over the span of a few weeks and you fight basically to the death and at the end whoever is standing last or whoever wins gets a wish granted whatever they want by like the high I don't know if she's like a goddess whatever she is she's like the higher up but within the first one she gets an ally who is Rain and you get kind of like that involved with it so you get the action and the adventure and the fast pace there but then you get a slow burn romance her writing is so amazing highly highly recommend The Love Wager by Island Painter. This is just a really fun, really fast-paced rom com -y, new adult contemporary romance book. This is about Hallie and Jack. They met the night of his sister's wedding. She was the bartender and he was the best man. And they kind of just like had a night together. They didn't know each other, but they just, they had a night together you know so then they find each other on a dating app they're both looking for love but not within each other so they make this like love wager to see who finds love first they go on dates together with different people but at like the same place and then they kind of like debrief it afterwards and they're in this little competition but really good i loved the writing of this one it's really fast paced it's one that you could just read on a really nice day outside and just binge the whole day it's one of those romances and that's why i absolutely loved it into another fantasy this one's a trilogy and this one is also by carissa broadbent this is also another excuse to give you guys this book as a recommendation because I've been dying to talk about this in a recommendations video and I haven't filmed any but here we are. I know this doesn't feel like a summer or spring book, but it just, I don't, it's just my excuse to talk about this because I love this book. This is my first Chris Broadbent book. It's a trilogy, like I said, I only read the first one, but I'm so obsessed with it. The writing, the storyline and everything about it. It's just so perfect. This is about Tisana who was sold into slavery when she was younger and she performs in front of merchants and she makes like butterflies come out of her hands. And she finally was able to buy out her freedom. And the first thing she wanted to do was go to the orders, which is this kind of like neutral city community of people. And when she gets there, she's thrown into this like apprenticeship with Max and Max is so not about it. He had this whole past with the orders and it's like, I am not helping. I'm not doing this. And he kind of just ends up slowly but surely teaching her all of this stuff that she needs to know in order to get into the order. But it just, this story is so fast paced. It takes such a turn and her writing is just so good. So good. You guys have to read at least one of Chris Rodman's books. That's all I want you to do from this video. Next is My Dark Romeo by Parker S. Huntington and LJ Shen. This is a another contemporary romance, enemies to lovers, marriage of convenience, forced proximity, all of those kinds of tropes. This is basically about Dallas who is arranged to marry this guy that her father 
arranged. But the night of a, I think it's a cotillion ball. It's something like that. They're kind of in that world. The night of it, she ends up kissing Romeo in order to save her father's reputation. Romeo's like, I'll just be her fiance, like break that engagement. I'm gonna marry her. They make this deal. She's kind of forced into it by her father and Romeo. And she's like literally, where was my say in this? She's forced to move into his house. He lives in this huge house. He's super rich guy. It's like one of those billionaire male main characters. And at first I didn't love him. He says these things that are just so weird. He talks so weird and Dallas is just like making fun of him and like they're very much not getting along. I really, really liked the ending of this and the way that his character development went from the beginning and how he acted in the beginning to how he was at the end. Like it was so good. Also the cover is beautiful, so that's a plus. Carrie Soto is back by Taylor Jenkins read. I think this is like perfect spring summer book to read. The vibes of it, I don't know. It's just giving that. So this is about Carrie Soto. It starts where she's watching this tennis player about to break her world record of like being one of the top women's tennis players. Carrie turns to her father and is like, I'm ready to come out of retirement. This woman cannot beat me. I'm the best of the best. So you then get the timeline of her figuring out her love for tennis and growing up with her father, teaching her tennis and all the rules. And you kind of like learn tennis through this, but you just see her personality, Carrie. And it's just so strong. Like this is a strong woman character. And she is just like so so sure of herself and just like sure that she is the best tennis player and she wants to be the best but it's not just about her playing tennis it's just like it's about her and her journey through this and things like that but yeah then you go through all of her tennis matches and all the other players and other characters within here up until like the last game and it's so good i love this so much and i think this is like a perfect i feel like it's a perfect spring summer read if you haven't read it yet things we hide from the light and things we never got over I said that backwards. This is the first one. I feel like the majority of people have probably read this or have seen it. At least have seen it. So this is about Naomi who flees from her wedding night because her sister calls her, her twin sister, to come and help her, whatever. So she flees, she goes to the small town of Knockamout, but her sister vanished and left her daughter Waylay there. Naomi had no idea she had a niece, but now she's there to pick up whatever her sister left for her. So she is now taking care of her niece. She bumps into Knox, and Knox right off the bat doesn't like her because he doesn't like her sister, but they're twins, and she's like, I'm not my sister. So he does end up helping her, finding a place for them to stay and all that. But I think this is perfect for Springer summer because it's not very like serious like the most amazing book ever this is just a fun good banter enemies to lovers i don't know the fun storyline type of book like it's a fun book to read in the nice weather is what i'm trying to say I think. And then you have the second one that just came out, Things We Had From The Light, and this is about Knox's brother. Something happens at the end of this book, and then you see him right off the bat going through that and trying to get through that. And he connects with Lena, who comes into the picture, who is also mentioned in this book, so you get that. What I love about this is it's like a found family aspect. You get all these characters that are in different scenes together. But I feel like it's like the perfect setting, so perfect spring summer books. And the third one comes out in September, so perfect time to read the both of these before the third book comes out, because I think the third book is going to be my favorite because it's about Lucia and Sloan, I just cannot wait. This is your sign to read those two books before probably the best of this series comes out. Next we have another fantasy, Once Upon a Broken Heart and The Ballad of Never After. So I got these covers from Book Depository. I think that they closed down, so I don't know if you can get them. This is the paperback and this is a hard cover. I am a little upset about that, but the covers are just so pretty, I don't care. Once Upon a Broken Heart comes first and then you read The Ballad of Never After. This is about Evangeline who made a deal with the Prince of Hearts, his name is Jax, and they always say you don't make deals with the fates, they're not gonna actually help you, but her one true love is marrying someone else and she wants to break up that wedding that engagement she's like he cannot be marrying this girl so she makes a deal with him and he's like you have to kiss three people that i say whatever she does that you're not supposed to do that and you go on this journey with her it's not intimidating fantasy it's definitely more fairy tale magical feel feeling of it reminds me of like alice in wonderland vibes we get that and then you go into the second one you get more of evangeline and jacks in this one and this storyline is just so much fun to go along with the ending of this tore me up and the third one also comes out i think in october so another series to read before the third one comes out this is your sign to read this one as well so good this stack is done. Let's switch it with this stack. First one we have here is The Summer I Turned Pretty by Jenny Han. This is a trilogy. I'm sure most of you have probably read this trilogy at one point in your life or watched the show. The show is amazing, but I put this in here because I feel like even if you've read it, you could reread the whole trilogy, but rereading this over the summer or the spring or whatever, it just feels so nostalgic and I think I'm gonna do it because it's, it's a quick read. This book over the summer, 
I think everyone needs to reread it. I think it's the perfect book to reread if you're gonna do that. But if you haven't read this, this is a YA trilogy and it's about Belly who's grown up with her family friends, Jeremiah and Conrad, and every summer they go to Cousins Beach and they kind of spend their summers there together. But this year, Belly goes and she's now like older. She's more with her feminine side. And she realizes she's ha always had a thing for one brother, but now she has a thing for both brothers. And it's this love triangle thing going on, but they've always been family friends and it's just like this whole thing. But it's just such a nostalgic read. I just think that everyone should reread this over the summer because I think I'm gonna do it. So now I'm like, we all have to do it together, you know? This just gives me summer vibes. Part of your world, this is age gap, small town, friends with the benefits to lovers. This one's really fun because I feel like small town is like the perfect setting for spring slash summer books. I don't know why, I just feel like it is. But this is about a woman who is a doctor. She's coming home from a family funeral and she gets stuck in his small town that he lives in. He helps her out of the little accident she gets into. She ends up at the bar in the town. He's like, I'm just gonna take a break here. And then they end up spending a night together. And she's like, well, I'm 10 years older than you. I live like an hour or two away. Like this isn't gonna work out. Like I'm leaving. And then they end up slowly hanging out more, but like they can't do anything because she's about to become like the biggest doctor. She's like next up in her family line of doctors. And he lives in the small town, works at like a bed and breakfast that he has. And it's just, it wouldn't work out, you know, in theory. Really good writing, really amazing story, really fun to go along. Great banter too. And also the age gap is she's older than him, which usually he's older than her in most age gaps that I feel like I've read at least. So that was fun. By a Thread by Lucy Score. This is one of my favorite books by her. And I just feel like her writing is so perfect for summer spring vibes because it's very fast paced. The banter is amazing. And this book just made me really giddy. And I love that feeling. So I feel like in my head, they correlate together the seasons and being giddy. I don't think that makes sense. Dom and Allie, who right off the bat get into an argument, he gets her fired from her job. And then his mom, who's a CEO at like the biggest fashion magazine in New York City, gives her a job and is like, you're working under Dom, but he can't fire you. So now she kind of has free reign to go back and forth with him in the office. I love the city setting. I love the banter between them. The storyline is just really fun to read. It's nothing serious. It's just really fun. And I think that's what made me love it so much. So read this. <laughs> Ghosted by J.M. Darhauer. This is one of my favorite books ever. This is a second chance romance. This is a single parent. It's so good. So this is about Kennedy who works in a grocery store. She's working paycheck to paycheck. She's trying to raise her daughter by herself. And then there's Jonathan who is one of the most famous actors. He's a superhero in like the biggest superhero movie. Think like Marvel, the top superhero. And then back in the day, Jonathan and Kennedy met in high school. And you get both timelines of them in high school and them currently. And in high school, the point of view is kind of written in her journal that she was writing. And you see through her eyes how she met Jonathan, what she thought about him and kind of like writing to him almost. It's so good, but then something happened and they no longer talked or whatever. And now he's coming back into her life and he's like, I'm ready to work this out. I'm ready to do this. And she's like, no. And you get the groveling trope. It's so good. And I absolutely love the child in here, which coming from my mouth is literally unheard of. I do not like children in books, but Maddie is so cute. I love her. Great book. This next series is very interesting for me to recommend during the spring and summer seasons, but I read the whole series over last summer. So now I correlate the series with the summer. So now I feel like I just have to recommend it during the season. The Shatter Me series. If you have not read this yet, I seriously think the summer is a great time to read it. And now I feel like that's not a normal opinion with dystopian or fantasy books, but these books are so fast paced and I loved reading them outside. It was just like the best vibe ever. If you don't know what Shatter Me is, it's about Juliet who was born with like a fatal touch. She touches someone and they will die. So now she's kind of held captive by the government basically. And they kind of want to use her and her powers. You go on the journey with her. There's like a love triangle going on. So many characters, such a nice found family. Family. The writing is so easy to read. It's so fast paced. It's like so many plot twists in each book and the series is pretty big and I read all of them. So that's saying something because I cannot read series for the life of me. Highly, highly recommend. It goes so quick and I just loved reading these over the span of the summer. It just felt right. Moving on to a book that I recommend, I think in every recommendations video and that is The Bodyguard by Catherine Center. If you have not read it yet, please read this, especially over the summer. It's like the perfect summer read. I think I might reread this over the summer. So the main girl character, she is part of like a secret protective service type of thing. So she is put on the job of this famous actor who is getting stalked. So she is now his protective service 
woman. The only catch is that his mom is really sick, so he has to go back to his home. But he doesn't want to tell his mom that he's being stalked. He does not want to scare her because she's sick, and it's just not the right timing to do that. So they have to pretend that they're dating. It's a fake dating trope, and it's so good. And where he lives, where his mom is staying, is like on this ranch. So it's like the perfect setting to read this in the summer. The banter is amazing. The writing is so fun. It's so fast paced. It's so good. So read it. <laughs> if you don't want to though, you don't have to. But I really think you should. Next, perfect spring summer book, Mary Jane. So this book, it takes place in the 1970s. This is about Mary Jane. She's like 14 years old and she gets a summer job nannying one of the families that moved in a couple streets over. So it's like this young daughter, Izzy, and then the two parents. And she comes from a traditional household. She's very conservative, lots of rules. Parents are kind of strict. The family that she's nannying for are the complete opposite of the household she comes to. They are freedom of speech. You could do whatever you want. You could start singing whenever you want and they have these people staying with them because the father is like a therapist i think of some sort and it's definitely character driven this is also literary fiction you just kind of go along mary jane meeting these people staying with them over the summer and connecting with them and it's so 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 good this is perfect to read on the beach now into the queen of summer spring mostly summer books we have ellen hildebrand this is the hotel nantucket this is her new book that came out last summer this is about this rich guy who redid the Hotel Nantucket, it was once burnt down. There's like this whole spooky story that a maid that died there is now like haunting it. You have Lisbeth becoming the manager of it. So like think White Lotus, if you've watched that show, you get the behind the scenes in the point of views of all the workers in the hotel and it's really fun. And you also get the point of view of the maid that died in the last place that burned down there. So you get her watching over everyone to get their point of views of what's happening. And there's just like one little mystery because there's this one character that no one knows what she looks like, but she comes to stay at the hotel and they really want to get a five star rating from her because she's like this like social media hotel influencer. And it's really fun. So if you want a really good summer book, read at least one of Ellen Hildebrand's books. It's perfect for the beach. How to Love Your Neighbor by Sophie Sullivan. This is kind of enemies to lovers. The enemies to lovers doesn't last very long. It's not like a true enemies to lovers. They just like don't get along at first. Um, I don't know, it's really good. <laughs> Okay, that's why I'm recommending it. This is about Noah and Grace, and Grace moves in next door to Noah because her grandmother left her her beach house when she passed away. Noah is very mad about this because he wants to buy it out from her, make it something else because he's a realtor, this whole thing. She's like, no, because she's an interior designer, and she's like, I'm gonna make this mine, I'm gonna live here. And they get just like a little bit of a feud. But they make an agreement, it's really fun, I love this story. It was so fast-paced for me. It is part of a companion series. I don't know what the names of the other ones are, but it's about, I think, Noah's brothers, because he has two brothers, but I. I absolutely loved this. It was so, so good. Such a like a refreshing rom com -y type of book. Then I have None Other Than Beach Read by Emily Henry. I think I recommended this last year for my summer book recs video. I recommend this whenever someone asks me for a summer rec. You know, this is just like what I think is the perfect book for a summer read. This I read like two years ago now, so I think I need to reread it to refresh my memory. But Gus and January are now next door neighbors because she moves into her late father's little like lake house. And they're both authors, so they strike up a deal to switch genres over the span of like a few weeks or the summer or something like that and they go on little adventures together to kind of take notes and get into each other's genres and it's really good the banter is amazing the storyline's amazing i really need to reread this but highly recommend if you haven't read it yet. I think I have one more. I read it on my Kindle. The Infinity Between Us by N.S. Perkins. This is a second chance romance, childhood friends to lovers, some of my favorite tropes. It's so, so, so good, but it's perfect for summer because it takes place at their beach house. She is going back to the beach house to clean it out because they're getting ready to sell it because their families no longer go there. Their families no longer talk, but she gets there. Her childhood friend is there and she's like, what are you doing here? And he's like, you can't sell this house. And she's like, I'm going to. But then they make this deal. He's like, just spend a few weeks here, spend the rest of the summer and if you still want to sell the house you can do so so they are stuck in this house together but then you get the timeline of them back in the day when they were just childhood friends connecting growing up together and then it kind of leads up to what happened to the both of them that they no longer speak but she gets all these memories and she's like thinking about everything because she's spending time in this house that she grew up with and spent summers at and it's really good that is the last recommendation that i have for the spring slash summer season mostly i feel like these are summer books but i said it was spring and summer because one we're in spring right now and two because i gave you fantasy recommendations and I feel like not a lot of people want to read fantasies in the summer so you could read them in the spring 
just read them. They're so good. Now on to my personal spring slash summer TBR. These are just books that I would love to get to by the end of summer. Nothing specific, not that I'm gonna get to them like right away. I have a few months to get to them. You know, they're just like on my radar. Ellen Hildebrand's new book. I have no idea what it's about. I think it's called The Five Star Weekend. Again, literally no idea what it's about, but I know I wanna read it and I'm gonna read it. Over the summer, I am so excited. I need to read at least one Ellen book every summer. She is just, like I said, the epitome of summer read. That's the first one. The Flawless series by Elsie Silver. I wanna read at least the rest of the series. I think I wanna read this one soon, but like the other, I think there's four of them. Is there a fifth coming out? I have no idea. But by the end of the summer, I wanna be able to say that I have read the whole series. This is like a country small town romance, I think. That's the vibe I get. That's like the gist I get from seeing what people say about it. I don't know really anything about any of them. I just, I think. It's like a cowboy type of romance. I think that's perfect for summer because it's like giving small town. Could be making that up, but yeah, I want to read this series by the end of the summer. The Edens series, Indigo Ridge by Devney Perry. This is the first one, Indigo Ridge. I think this is four books, but I heard this is like romance mixed with mystery and I absolutely love that. And I want to, again, be able to say by the end of the summer that I read the whole series. I want to read this one sooner rather than later, but again, by the end of the summer, I want to read all of them. I have no idea what they're about. I think this is also small town. Could be, could be not, I don't know. Then I want to finish the Renegades trilogy. The first, this is the second one. It's called Arch Enemies. The first one is called Renegades. It's by Marissa. Some Meyer. This is a dystopian trilogy. It's basically about like superheroes and like the, the government superhero, the renegades are kind of against the anarchists, which is the main character Nova is a part of. She's trying to get revenge because of something that the renegades did. So it's kind of like them going back and forth with each other, but there's like a mini romance in it and it's really, really good. I absolutely love dystopian books and I love the superhero-esque vibes of it. So I want to finish this in the next few months. I absolutely love the first one. It was so fun. Happy Place by Emily Henry. I am going to give it a chance. I did DNF Book Lovers, her last release, but this one I feel like I'm gonna like I don't know, but it's basically about what I've seen. These two who are a couple in college end up breaking up, but they go on like this annual best friend trip with their friends and they haven't told anyone that they broke up. So they have to like pretend they're still together while they're there, something like that. But I definitely wanna read it. I think it comes out really soon. So I will be reading that probably soon. Carvel two and three. So it's a legendary and finale, I think it is. I read the first one in the Carvel trilogy, but like I said, I read Once Upon a Broken Heart and The Ballad of Never After, which come after the Carvel trilogy, but I read them opposite. You're supposed to read the Carvel first. You don't have to, but I didn't do that. But the third one after Ballad of Never After comes out in October. So I wanna just say I finished the Carvel trilogy before that. So I have like all of it read that you're supposed to read prior before that comes out. Probably not till later on at the end of summer, I'll read those two just because it's closer to the release date and they're not really like summery books, I feel like. They could be, you can make any book a summer book. But anyway, Meet Me at the Lake, I think it's called by Carly Fortune who wrote Every Summer After. I did enjoy Every Summer After. The more I think of it, I don't love it as much as I did when I first read it, but it definitely was a perfect summer read and I feel like Meet Me at the Lake will also be a perfect summer read. So I am very excited for that book to come out. I have no idea when it comes out. I think it's very soon, we shall see. Then I have I Found You by Lisa Jewell. This is the same author as, what did I just read? Then She Was Gone that I absolutely loved. So I'm excited to read this, but this is in my spring summer TBR because because this takes place in a beach town. Basically this woman finds this guy on the beach. He doesn't even know his name. He has no idea how he got there. And she's like, literally, who are you? I'm excited to read this, a beach town mystery. That sounds fun. Then I have Float by Kate Marcant. This is actually a Wattpad book, but I just love the cover and I just love a good YA book like this over the summer. I'm excited to just sit on a beach and read this. That's the vibe I picture in my head. Just look at the cover. Does that not give you beach summer vibes? Because it does for me. I think her parents got divorced and she's choosing who to stay with over the summer and she goes to Florida and she sees her next door neighbor who's super hot. Sounds fun. Then I have two Abby Jimenez books, The Friend Zone, Yours Truly. Again, no idea what these ones are about. I think one of them is about the main character in Part of Your World, her best friend. It's also a doctor. This is her love story. And then this one, I don't know what it's about. I just see if there's a dog on the back, which is really cute and really fun. There's a dog on this one too. How cute is that? But I want to read her books because Destiny loves her writing and she says that they're just like easy rom com books and her writing is really good, which I agree with because I really enjoyed her writing in Part of Your World. So I am excited to read these two. I want to get through her books as well and I feel like reading them spring summertime is the perfect time. I feel like I can't be in my fantasy era over the summer, which I hope I still am. I hope I'm still reading fantasy, but I just feel like some romances have to come back in the spring and the summer, you know? It can't just be fantasy reads. Those are all of the books that are on my spring slash summer TV. Are. These are all of the books that I recommend you guys reading if you haven't already during your spring or summer months. 
or just at any time you can read them but in my head those are the perfect seasons for them thank you guys so much for watching i hope you guys enjoyed i hope you guys got at least one recommendation from this video and i know it's been a while since i filmed my last one i'm hoping there's at least one you guys have gotten from this video and let me know which one it is let me know what you're planning on reading too over the spring and the summer because these are my two favorite seasons to read reading outside is just my favorite thing in the entire world I'm excited. We'll see if I get through these books over the summer. We're gonna have to see in a few months if I did or if I didn't. I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know if you did. Let me know any of the books on your TBR or that you recommend me to read over the spring or the summer. Shout out spring and summer, my favorite months. Actually, yeah, I would say they're my favorite months. I don't know why I'm getting into this. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know if you did and I will see you hopefully in the next one. Bye.